Hey, this is Audrey again. Thank you so much to Sarah Jones, who has let me use her laptop so I don't have to use my makeshift microphone. So hopefully you can hear me better today. So I'm going to go through very quickly um, some examples of the thinking maps, and then you can play this. And again, I will save this PowerPoint to the P drive, and I can also email it to you if you would like to keep it, but you can go to the P drive and save it too. And um, that way you have all the examples that you'll ever need. And again, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic. So I'm going to talk super fast so I can keep it under 15 minutes to keep this free. So what we have here is a thinking map about thinking maps, um, which tell us why we should use thinking maps in a circle map. So it defines thinking maps for us. So thinking maps are visual patterns. Kids learn better with visuals. It can go across content areas. We want all teachers to use it. It's based on eight cognitive skills that we're going to go over today, and you can have different DOKs. So here are some examples of circle maps. Here is something that you could do the first week of school, or you could do with characters and ELA. So we've got the kid in the middle, and we have all the things that define him, um, like baseball, Nintendo 64, Legos. And then these are outside in the frame of reference, are the people who influence that. His papa, he likes to be on his couch, his friends. Um, the next circle map goes with some guiding questions. So um, it shows you what kind of guides you to use a circle map, like using context clues to find words or topics, what you already know. Um, how do you know what you know would be, and where did you get the information? Those things would go outside of the circle. So. This is a circle map all about dolphins. So as he read, whales and other sea mammals, um, and grassy at, or sorry, dolphins at Grassy Key, as they read those two texts, he wrote, or the group wrote, everything they could find about dolphins. And then based on the questions that the teacher gave them to answer, then they made an essay about it. And this is like a third grade essay, and that's a lot of writing for a third grader. Um, also, circle maps, um, you can use them for brain um, brainstorming, pre-writing activities, and also for vocabulary development. So you could give them a word, he acted sort of suddenly, entirely on a whim. So whim may be the word that you're going to study. And then you can think of every word or phrase that you could substitute in for whim, and they could write those around in the circle. Um, other ways, you could do integers this way. Of course, this is only adding, but you could put a negative in front of there, and you could do multiplying, dividing, subtracting, adding, and have all the ways that a negative six, or in this case, a six, is defined. Um, another circle map, George Washington's farewell address. Again, the sources are around for the frame of reference. This is where they found all of their information, and then within it are all the things that defines his farewell address. It kept U.S. independent. It resolved international, um, internal differences. You can also use any of the thinking maps for assessments. So here we have um, one of my favorites. Um, we have clues, and then you have to use those clues to go see what goes in the middle. So who drives a Cadillac, may still be alive, has rockin' sideburns, and wears scarves? If you don't know that, we can't be friends. It's Elvis. All right, so that's circle maps. So bubble maps. Bubble maps are describing, um, descri their goal is to describe. So you can give the characteristics of, we use adjectives that can show qualities and proper properties. And that's what you're going to see in all the examples. So the first example we have from a reading, um, these are all the adjectives that describe Medea. Medea. The next one is a bulletin board has pre-K students, and it has the picture and what word that pre-K kid used to describe himself. This kid's brilliant. This kid's polite. He's persistent, which maybe the teacher helped with some of those. Um, I like this one a lot because it's interactive. So, of course, that's Harry Potter right there. And these are all the words at some point in the story described Harry Potter, like magical, brave, anxious, sad, and then underneath the circle, it says there's evidence from the text that says why he, are, he is those things. So underneath anxious would be a reason why in the text or an excerpt from the text, evidence from the text that says or shows, that proves that he's anxious, 
daring, famous, homeless. So um, that's citing evidence, which is a big common core um, skill and ELA standard. Another um, bubble map, we have Margot and we have all the things that she is, how she changes throughout the story. And again, they put the adjectives in the circles and then they drew some visual aids around it, but they also cited evidence with page numbers from the text. Just having kids do that brings that from a DOK1 up to at least a DOK2. And um, there it says how it's sorting. And then another circle map example, Lady Macbeth. Again, more citing sources adjectives that describe Lady Macbeth and then and then how how we know that um, where the sources are and then I really like this for point of view this is combining social studies and language arts standards so we have the point of view of a northern um, abolitionist compared to a southern slave owner but it's about the same person and then you could have a debate you could include those speaking and listening standards one more I'm um, using the five sentences on a science lab, so we've covered every single subject could be used with adjectives and a bubble map. It's not just for language arts. We can use those in every subject area. The next one is a double bubble. It's a lot like a Venn diagram. This tends to be one of the easiest ones, so I'm just going to fly through these. You can see this one's color coordinated, so we have the blue that just describes this kind of seed, and green describes this kind of seed, and red describes both, and then where they found that, they found a website, detected it in a lab, um, different places where they got their information. Here's another one, a math, um, the difference between a array and a line segment, um, the different kinds of cells, another one that's color coded, and you can see this one goes back and forth, no mit mitochondria, mitochondria. So it compares exactly one thing to the next. You don't have to do that, but you can. Another one, Roman Republic versus U.S. government, super powerful to make things relevant for kids, is compare things to things they already know about, like where they live. And you can see that they use visuals there. The next one we're going to talk about is tree map. Um, you classify, you group, you sort, you categorize, you find types of and kinds of information. So here is one about goals, behavior goals versus academic goals. Here has all the, all the parts of a story, the characters, the setting, the problem, and the solution. Um, here, this would be great for assessment if you gave them all of these words and then they just, you had this top part for them and they had to go and categorize those things. And then you could differentiate that. You could give some kids a word bank and you could make some kids do it from scratch depending where they are. Um, this is a great one for connotation denota um, denotation or for tier two vocabulary. So building um, on, on word meanings and using bigger and um, more powerful words with tone and voice in kids' writing. Um, rational versus irrational, you give the kids the cutout, they put it on the paper, and then they have to color it um, so they can't go and look at somebody else's and, and change it around, change the glue around. Um, here's one for figurative language. This would be, this just shows a great ticket out the door activity where you give the kids a post-it and then they have to classify where it goes. So um, later at the end of this, I'm going to talk about how you can take these annoying questions at the back of a um, textbook and you can have the kids turn it into this. So describe the characteristics of bacteria. We need the kids to know when they see the word characteristics or describe it goes right with the bubble map. Name and describe. Name is kind of like defining, but describe means, um, of course, adjectives. So either one of those would be great for that. Um, here we're comparing two things, so it would be a double bubble. Um, list several ways. The word list tells them to go to tree map. So again, we just want to emphasize that we teach the kids. And then I want to go back to yesterday. I showed you all this frame. So again, the green is where they're getting the information. Um, the blue is mapping that information, why we're doing what we're doing. And the red is just really the upper DOK where we have the kids, so what, so why, so what am I learning, and so why am I learning it? Who cares? And we're going to talk about that at the end too. All right, so a flow map. Flow maps show sequence. They organize multi-step problems. Um, great for math, great for step-by-step. Here is um, mitosis, the stages there. Um, this is a word problem that a math teacher has 
giving them the steps, and then they have to show the work underneath. Here's a visual of the plot of a story in language arts. And multi-flow is cause and effect. Cause and effect. All of this is DOK 2 and 3, whereas a circle and a bubble is DOK 1. So these are a little bit more complicated. We're going to talk about that in a little bit too. So exploration. And these things cause the explore, European exploration. And these things were the effects. And then the kids um, take the stuff they've already learned, combine it with that, and then they can write about it. I love this for math, a function machine. This is inputted into this, and this is outputted. So this caused the effect of this. Love that. I love this one, too. Um, it, this is why a kid got a grade that he did. So this might be something that you do with kids at the end. So thinking maps can be used for character ed, too. So he didn't do all of his homework. Is a cause effect of that is he's going to be grounded for who knows how long. His guitar, it's in the trash. And his mama's got steam coming out of her head over an 83. It's probably a gifted child. Okay, and then here we have parts of the story where Jonathan became an outcast and then he became an instructor. So this caused this to happen and then this was the result and then that changed for him to become an instructor, which caused something else. So two and one, super high D, okay there. A brace map is whole to part. You can tell I'm talking faster because I only have 15 minutes. I'm almost out of time. So we've broken down the Americas. We've broken down the parts of a plant with a, with um, visual. I love this one with Japan. You could do that with all the regions in 7th grade social studies and 8th grade Georgia region. This is great so they can see 3D shapes and math. They can see exactly, a lot of times they forget that fourth triangle. A bridge map is all about analogies. Um, make it visuals with fractions. Um, symbolism in stories, this symbolized that. Um, the um, conversion units for science and math. Um, I think this would be a great thing to do with the three religions and seventh grade social studies. This is perfect to do with that. Here are comparing two different stories. If you do literature circles, you can combine groups and have them talking to each other about what they're reading. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about for the next two minutes are using thinking maps with writing. So I talked a little bit earlier about those annoying questions at the end of chapter books and you know, oh, they don't want me reading out of textbooks. No, we certainly want the kids reading out of textbooks. We just want the kids reading, but we don't want them reading and then just going and doing the definitions and answering the questions in the back without ever speaking, listening, talking, collaborating. So this is a great way to do it with thinking maps. So you take those questions at the end of the chapter. You have the kids identify what the thinking map should be. There's one assessment of learning right there. You look and see. Then you have kids right in the frame. So what am I learning and what conclusions can I draw at the end? I do not have a question mark out there. That's driving me crazy. I'll have to fix that. Um, and then you have them answer those. So they do the thinking map. They, they, first, they write what they're supposed to learn. What standard are they doing? How are they going to figure it out? Then they do the thinking map. Then at the end, they have to draw conclusions. Then you tell them to turn that into the race strategy. So the first thing they're going to do is restate the question. So what am I learning? Then they're going to answer the question and cite evidence. That's all the things in the thinking maps. And then the E and the S explain and summarize. That's the closing sentence where they draw conclusions from there. That should have blown your mind. If not, rewind and listen to that again. We are using thinking maps across subject areas to use the race strategy. Language arts teachers you should do a fist bump. How else can you use it? You can use it for scaffolding and um, with different groups. You can number kids off the kids that are your weaker readers and your weaker writers. Make them ones all the way up to the strongest kids in your class be fours. Have the ones do the circle maps and the bubble maps. Have the fours do the more complex cause and effect. Um, and then give them different questions to answer. Put the ones, twos, threes, fours together. Have them do perfect circle maps and causing um, multi-flow maps, things like that, then go back to the group, and the ones have to tell the twos, twos have to tell the threes, and then they have to do a paragraph that defines, describes, give causes and effects and solution, and predicts what happens at the end. Very, very quickly, my very last slide. Um, most importantly, share, share, share. Steal, steal, steal. Put it out for the world to see in the hallway, in your classroom. Show somebody else. Come tell me. Show Dr. Greeson. Invite us in. Just, you know, over the top collaboration and just being proud of your work. So let me know if you have any questions and if I can help you with any of this, I would be so happy to. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it.